Upper GI Bleeding Introduction Upper gastrointestinal bleeding is defined as bleeding derived from a source proximal to the ligament of triads. Acute gastrointestinal bleeding is a potentially life-threatening emergency that remains a common cause of hospitalization. Categories It can be categorized as either viseal or non-viseal. Viseal is a complication of end-stage liver disease, while non-viseal bleeding associated with peptic ulcer disease or other causes of upper gastrointestinal bleeding. Occurrence Upper gastrointestinal bleeding is four times as common as bleeding from lower gastrointestinal tract, with a higher incidence in male. Causes of upper gastrointestinal bleeding Causes depend on the site of bleeding. There are three sites, esophagus stomach, duodenum, so the causes will be categorized as, number 1, esophageal causes, esophageal versus, esophagitis, esophageal cancer, esophageal ulcers, Mallory Vistier, number 2, gastric causes, gastric ulcer, gastric cancer, gastritis, gastric versus, delafoise lesions, number 3, duodenal causes, duodenal ulcer, vascular malformation including aortoenteric fistulae, hematobilia, or bleeding from the biliary tree, hemisuccus pancreaticus, or bleeding from the pancreatic duct, severe superior mesenteric artery syndrome. Signs and symptoms of a patient presenting with upper gastrointestinal bleeding, hematemesis, melina, hematochiza, syncope, dyspepsia, epigastric pain, heartburn, diffuse abdominal pain, dysphagia, weight loss, and jaundice. Common presentation of upper GI bleed. 1. Hematemesis, vomiting of blood, could be digested blood in the stomach coffee ground emesis that indicates slower rate of bleeding, or fresh, unaltered blood, gross blood and clots, indicates rapid bleeding. 2. Melina, Stool consisting of partially digested blood, black dairy, semi-solid, shiny and has a distinctive odor. When it's present, it indicates that blood has been present in the GI tract for at least 14 hours. The more proximal the bleeding site, the more likely melina will occur. 3. Hematochiza Usually represents a lower GI source of bleeding, although an upper GI lesion may bleed so briskly that blood does not remain in the bowel long enough for melina to develop. How to approach a patient with upper GI bleed? First, we will take history and take notes on following points. Abdominal pain, hematemesis, hematochiza, melina, features of blood loss, shock, syncope, anemia, features of underlying cause, dyspepsia, jaundice, weight loss, drug history, NSAIDs, aspirin, corticosteroids, anticoagulants, SSRIs, particularly fluoxetine and sertraline, history of epistaxis or hemoptysis to rule out the GI source of bleeding, past medical, previous episodes of upper gastrointestinal bleeding, diabetes mellitus coronary artery disease chronic renal or liver disease or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, past surgical, previous abdominal surgery, after taking history, next step is examination, general examination and systemic examinations. That will show following signs, 1, vitals, pulse showing thready pulse, BP showing orthostatic hypotension, 2, signs of shock, cold extremities, tachycardia, hypotension chest pain, confusion, delirium, oliguria, and etc. 3, skin changes cirrhosis, palmar erythema, spider nevi, 4, bleeding disorders, purpura, achimosis, 5, coagulation of disorders, hemarthrosis, muscle hematoma, 6, signs of dehydration, dry mucosa, sunken eyes, skin turgor reduced, 7, signs of a tumor may be present, nodular liver, abdominal mass, lymphadenopathy, and etc. 8. DRE, fresh blood, occult blood, bloody diarrhea. 9. Respiratory, CVS, 
CNS examinations are done for identifying comorbid diseases. After doing examination, next step is laboratory diagnosis, for which, we need following lab reports. 1. CBC with platelet count, and differential, a complete blood count, CBC, is necessary to assess the level of blood loss. CBC should be checked frequently Q4 to 6 hours, during the first day. 2. Hemoglobin value, type and cross-match blood The patient should be cross-matched for 2 6 units, based on the rate of active bleeding. The hemoglobin level should be monitored serially in order to follow the trend. An unstable HB level may signify ongoing hemorrhage, requiring further intervention. 3. LFT, to detect underlying liver disease. 4. RFT, to detect underlying renal disease. 5. Calcium level, to detect hyperparathyroidism, and in monitoring calcium in patients receiving multiple transfusions of citrated blood. 6. Gastrin level. 7. The bun to create I9 ratio, increases with upper gastrointestinal bleeding. A ratio of greater than 36 in a patient without renal insufficiency is suggestive of upper gastrointestinal bleeding. 8. The patient's prothrombin time, PT, activated partial thromboplastin time, and international normalized ratio, INR, should be checked to document the presence of a coagulopathy. Prolongation of the PT based on an INR of more than 1. 5th of May indicate moderate liver impairment. 10. A fibrinogen level of less than 100 mg per deciliter also indicates advanced liver disease with extremely poor synthetic function. Endoscopy. It is the initial diagnostic examination for all patients, presumed to have upper GI bleed. Endoscopy should be performed immediately after endotracheal intubation, if indicated, hemodynamic stabilization, and adequate monitoring in an intensive care unit, ICU, setting have been achieved. Imaging includes, 1 chest x-ray, chest radiographs should be ordered to exclude aspiration pneumonia, effusion, and esophageal perforation. 2 abdominal x-ray, erect and supine films should be ordered to exclude perforated viscous and ileus. 3. Computed domography, court, scanning and ultrasonography, may be indicated for the evaluation of liver disease with cirrhosis, cholecystitis with hemorrhage, pancreatitis with pseudocyst and hemorrhage, aortoenteric fistula, and other unusual causes of upper GI hemorrhage. 4. Nuclear medicine scans may be useful in determining the area of active hemorrhage. Angiography. Angiography may be useful if bleeding persists, and endoscopy fails to identify a bleeding site. Angiography, along with transcathetor arterial embolization, TE, should be considered for all patients with a known source of arterial upper GI bleed, that does not respond to endoscopic management with active bleeding and a negative endoscopy. In cases of aortoenteric fistula, angiography requires active bleeding, 1 mL per minute, to be diagnostic. A nasogastric tube is an important diagnostic tool. This procedure may confirm recent bleeding, coffee ground appearance, possible active bleeding, red blood in the aspirate that does not clear, or a lack of blood in the stomach. Active bleeding less likely but does not exclude an upper GI lesion. Benefits of lavage. 1. Better visualization during endoscopy. 2. Give crude estimation of rapidity of bleeding. 3. Prevent the development of portosystemic encephalopathy and cirrhosis. 4. Increases pH of stomach, and hence, decreases clot desolation due to gastric acid dilution. 5. Tube placement can reduce the patient's need to vomit. Note, during gastric lavage, use saline and not use large volume of to avoid water intoxication. Gastric lavage should be done in alert and cooperative patient to avoid bronchopulmonary aspiration. How will we assess severity of upper GI bleeding? We will use a scoring system called Rock Hall Score. This scoring system has five parameters age, comorbidity, shock, source of bleeding, 
stigmata of recent bleeding, a total score of more than 8, indicates high risk of death, a total score of less than 3, indicates excellent prognosis, management, priorities are, 1, stabilize the patient, protect airway, restore circulation, 2, identify the source of bleeding, 3, definitive treatment of the cause, resuscitation and initial management, protect airway, position the patient on side, for access, use one two large bore cannula, take blood for, HB, PCV, PT in cross match, restore the circulation, if patient is hemodynamically stable give NS infusion, if not, Give colloid 500 milliliters slash one hour and then crystalloid and continue until blood is available. Transfuse blood for obvious massive blood loss, hematocrit less than 25% with active bleeding, symptoms due to low hematocrit and hemoglobin. Platelet transfusion should be offered to patients who are actively bleeding and have a platelet count of less than 50,000. Fresh frozen plasma should be used for patients who either have a fibrinogen level of less than 1 gram per liter or INR greater than 1.5 times normal. Over transfusion may be as damaging as under transfusion. Monitor urine output. Watch for signs of fluid overload. Raised JVP. Pulmonary edema. Peripheral edema. Commence intravenous PPI. Omeprazole 80 mg intravenous followed by 8 mg slash hour for 72 hours. Keep the patient nil by mouth for the endoscopy. Treatment of riceal bleeding, terolopressin. Treatment should be stopped after definitive homeostasis has been achieved, or after 5 days, unless there is another indication for its use. Prophylactic antibiotic therapy, balloon tamponade should be considered as a temporary salvage treatment for uncontrolled riceal hemorrhage. 1. Esophageal versus Band ligation Stent insertion is effective for selected patients. Transjugular intrahepatic port systemic shunts Dips Should be considered if bleeding from esophageal versus is not controlled by band ligation. 2. Gastric versus Endoscopic injection of N-butyl 2 cyanoacrylate should be used. Tips should be offered. If bleeding from gastric versus is not controlled by endoscopic injection of N-butyl 2 cyanoacrylate, treatment of non vriceal bleeding, endoscopy, is now the method of choice for controlling active peptic ulcer related upper GI bleed. Endoscopic therapy should only be delivered to actively bleeding lesions non-bleeding visible vessels and, when technically possible, to ulcers with an adherent blood clot, black or red spots, or a clean ulcer base with oozing do not merit endoscopic intervention. Since these lesions have an excellent prognosis without intervention, adrenaline, epinephrine, should not be used as monotherapy for the endoscopic treatment of non vriceal upper GI bleed. For the endoscopic treatment of non vriceal upper GI bleed, one of the following should be used 1. A mechanical method, clips, with or without adrenaline, epinephrine. 2. Thermal coagulation with adrenaline, epinephrine. 3. Fibrin or thrombin with adrenaline, epinephrine. Interventional radiology should be offered to unstable patients who rebleed after endoscopic treatment. Refer urgently for surgery if interventional radiology is not immediately available. Indications for surgery: 1. Persistent hypotension. 2. Failure of medical treatment or endoscopic homeostasis. 3. Coexisting condition: perforation, obstruction, malignancy. 4. Transfusion requirement, 4 units in 24 hours, 5. Recurrent hospitalizations, types of operations. The choice of operation depends on the site and the bleeding lesions. 1. Duodenal ulcers are treated by, under running with or without bileroplasty. 2. Gastric ulcers treated by, under running, take a biopsy to exclude carcinoma. 3. Local excision or partial gastrectomy will be required. Complications can arise from treatments administered, for example, endoscopy. 1. Aspiration pneumonia. 2. Perforation. 3. 
complications from coagulation, laser treatments, surgery, 1, ILS, 2, sepsis, 3, wound problems, prevention. The most important factor to consider is treatment for H. pylori infection, first line therapy PPI, omeprazole, lansoprazole, pantoprazole, plus two of these three antibiotics, clarithromycin, amoxicillin, metronidazole, second line therapy, PPI, bismuth, metronidazole, tetracycline, for seven days.